Okay, so this is very exciting because this could potentially be the first time in my 12 years of teaching chemistry that I have successfully made a super saturated solution. So this is a one shot deal. If this doesn't pan out, then you'll never see this video. But, um, but before I do that, let's talk about what a super saturated solution is. Okay, so before we get to the cool part where I test to see if the super saturated solution worked or not, um, let's talk about what that means. So an unsaturated solution would be a solution that's dilute. So that means, let's say that we're making Kool-Aid. You have a lot of water with a little bit of Kool-Aid powder, just a little bit enough to change the color of the water. It's dilute. It's weak. You wouldn't want to drink it. Saturated would mean that you have dissolved enough Kool-Aid powder to make it a nice dark red. And if you tried to dissolve any more, like if you added another scoop, it would just kind of sink to the bottom of the container. It wouldn't dissolve because it, the water is holding as much stuff as it could. Now you might think, and you probably, you maybe have done this before. How could you get more of the Kool-Aid powder, the sugary stuff, how could you get more of it to dissolve? You might already know this. You could heat it up and you would be able to dissolve more in. That's a simple rule about dissolving solids. In fact, it looks something like this. So the higher the temperature, the more stuff you can dissolve into the mixture. So to create a super saturated solution, what you do is you heat it way up to here. So you dissolve a whole bunch of stuff and then you slowly cool it off. The super saturated solution that I prepared, I actually left it on that hot plate so that it was super hot when I left and I let it cool down as the hot plate cooled off. I mean, that thing cooled off for more than 24 hours that I left it undisturbed. So you slowly come back this way into this region where you're not supposed to be able to have that much stuff at this temperature. So you're forcing it to stay dissolved, which is what makes it unstable. So a couple of examples that you might have seen this, um, honey is actually a very super saturated solution. That's why like after a while it gets all crystally because honey is actually only about 17% water. So that's a lot of sugar in a little tiny bit of water. So it does that recrystallizing thing and you can warm it up. Um, some people will microwave it. It's better to put it in a hot water bath and you might think you're melting the honey, but what you're doing is you're actually allowing it to redissolve into that little bit of water. Another example is making jello. When you make jello, you dissolve the gelatin sugar powder that comes in the box. You dissolve that into hot water. And then you add a little bit of cold water to sort of start the process and so that you don't have something scalding hot going into your refrigerator. Um, but then you put it in the fridge and you let it slowly cool off over a period of time, overnight or a few hours. And when it becomes all, you know, unsaturated again, that uh, that stuff that's in there, when it's when it's uh, super saturated, when the stuff comes out of solution, you get the wiggly jiggly gelatin that we all know and love. Right now for the exciting part. So since a super saturated solution is so unstable, you can bring all of the dissolved stuff that's been forced in there, you can bring it out of being dissolved by just adding one seed crystal to the mixture. So I'm gonna drop one seed crystal in there and you're gonna see all of that other disso dissolved sodium acetate gonna come uh, become undissolved and this should actually turn um, this liquid, which right now just looks like clear water, into a, a full a full solid, almost like it's frozen. All right, I'm gonna drop this one crystal in. Here goes nothing. Oh yeah, look at that. I did it for the first time. <laughs> so as you can see, it turned to a complete solid in there. This is very exciting, especially if you are um, my current students. If you guys remember me telling you about how I've never been able to do this before, this is the first time. And it's very, very exothermic, which means it gives heat off. So this was room temperature when I started, and now it's it's actually warm to the touch. So a uh, we call this demo hot ice. So there it is. Cool.